All right, welcome back. In this segment, we're going to take the big five inventory. All right, so get out a piece of paper and a pencil. You need room to give 41 or 43 responses. I can't remember. I just made this slide and I already forgot. <laughs> so you'll need a piece of paper. And <clears throat> so the instructions say, here are a number of characteristics that may or may not apply to you. For example, do you agree that you are someone who likes to spend time with others? Please write a number next to each statement to indicate the extent to which you agree or disagree with that statement. And here are the numbers that you'll have available. So one means that you strongly disagree with the statement, two, you disagree a little, three, you neither agree nor disagree, four, you agree a little, and five, you agree strongly. So these are your numbers. Um, I've had students give like two and a half and things like that. That's not really helpful for um, actually summing up your score at the end. So just go ahead and commit. Pick one of the numbers. Um, don't leave any of the items blank if you really want to complete the scale and find out, you know, what the big five inventory says your traits are. Because if you leave one item blank, then your um, score for that scale will be completely uninterpretable. So just go ahead and, you know, <clears throat> If you're not completely sure, just put down your gut instinct number. Like, don't think about it super hard. All right, here are the first 10 questions. Before each of these statements, you wanna to think to yourself, I see myself as someone who, number one is talkative. I see myself as someone who, number two, tends to find fault with others. So imagine to yourself that it always says, I see myself as someone who, and give ratings for is talkative. Number two, tends to find fault with others. Three, does a thorough job. Four, is depressed, blue. Five, is original, comes up with new ideas. Six, is reserved. Seven, is helpful and unselfish with others. Eight, can be somewhat careless. Nine, is relaxed, handles stress well. 10 is curious about many different things. 11 is full of energy. 12 starts quarrels with others. 13 is a reliable worker. 14 can be tense. 15 is ingenious, a deep thinker. 16 generates a lot of enthusiasm. 17 has a forgiving nature. 18 tends to be disorganized. 19, worries a lot. 20, I just noticed there's an item missing, so excuse me for a moment while I fix this. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, got that fixed. Okay, so now number 20, has an active imagination. 21, tends to be quiet. 22, is generally trusting. 23, tends to be lazy. 24 is emotionally stable, not easily upset. 25 is inventive. 26 has an assertive personality. 27 can be cold and aloof. 28 perseveres until the task is finished. 29 can be moody. 30 values artistic aesthetic experiences. 31 is sometimes shy, inhibited. 32 is considerate and kind to almost everyone. Stuck. 33 does things efficiently. 34 remains calm in tense situations. 35 prefers work that is routine. 36 is outgoing, sociable. 37 is sometimes rude to others. 38 makes plans and follows through with them. 39 gets nervous easily. 40 likes to reflect, play with ideas. 41 has few artistic interests. 42 likes to cooperate with others. 43 is easily distracted. 44 is sophisticated in art, music, or literature. Okay, so that completes the scale. If you needed to pause or go back and reread any of them, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, I will um, go ahead and pr proceed on how to score the Big Five Inventory. 
So you're going to want to pause this and do what it says here on the screen. So for the items that are listed there, you're going to want to change the rating that you gave. So if you originally gave number two a one, you're going to change it to a five. If you gave number two a two, change that to a four. If you give it a three, it'll stay the same. If you give it a four, change it to a two. If you give it a five, change it to a one. And you'll go through and do that for each of those items that are listed in that box. So you're literally flipping the score for all of those. So go ahead and pause me, reverse your ratings, and I'll meet you back here. All right, so hopefully you're playing along and hopefully you have reversed your uh, ratings. So now let's see what you're doing. Okay, this is called the big five, so you, it won't be super surprising to tell you that there are five different subscales on this test that you just took. The first subscale is called extroversion or surgency. So it's made up of the traits of sociability, warmth, and assertiveness. And to get your big, uh, your um, extroversion scale score, you will sum up your scores for item, the items that are listed here. Items 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, 31, and 36. So again, you can pause me and add those up. Before you pause me though, I want to reiterate that on those items that you reverse the scoring, you use the new reversed score for that item. So for number six, you will use the score that you gave it after going through the reverse process that we just did a second ago. All right, so pause me, add those up, and, and that'll be your extroversion score. All right, so hopefully you're back and you've got your extroversion score. I'll talk about that more in a second. Let's compute your agreeableness score. Um, this is made up of the traits of straightforwardness, trust, altruism, and modesty. Add up your scores for the items listed here. Pause me and do that. All right, so hopefully we're back and you've got an agreeableness score. The next scale is the conscientiousness scale, which is a lack of impulsivity. Um, so that's gonna include things like competence and persistence and prudence. To calculate this score, you'll add up the items listed here. So go ahead and do that. All right, hopefully you're done adding up your conscientiousness score. That brings us to neuroticism. It's also known as emotional instability. So you're going to be assessing, you know, your tendency towards anxiety, hostility, depression, and vulnerability by summing up these items that are listed here. All right, hopefully you've got your neuroticism score summed up. And our final trait would be openness. Um, oftentimes it's referred to as openness to experience, and that's even short for openness to experience, culture, and intellect. It includes your um, tendency towards imagination, having an aesthetic sense, and your general curiosity. And it's assessed by the items listed here. So go ahead and sum up those. All right, so hopefully you have now five scores, one for each of these subscales that will represent the degree to which you are towards the polar ends of these five traits. Think about each of these traits as being a continuum um, extroversion is going to run from introversion through neutral, you're sort of introverted, sort of extroverted, depending on the circumstances, to really extroverted, right? So think about it like a continuum. Agreeableness is going to run from agreeableness on one end and then like skepticism on the other end. Um, untrusting would be another way of saying what's opposite of agreeableness. Conscientiousness, I already listed what would be the, op um, the opposite would be impulsive. So you've got conscientiousness on one side and then you've got impulsivity on the other side. Neuroticism, um, it's kind of implied by the secondary definition also that it's going to be, you know, emotional instability on one side and emotional stability on the other side. And then openness is going to be openness on one end of the continuum. And then, um, you know, I, I don't think closed would make sense to say is on the other end, but it would be, you know, less um, creative, less adventure seeking. I don't know. There's, it's hard to say exactly what the, I don't think there's a single word that is the opposite of openness that would make sense. But it's, you know, having less imagination, less concern with the aesthetic, you know, less curiosity. All right. Now the big five inventory is one of those that was developed through factor analysis, which I explained in a previous lecture, you know, that it's this statistical procedure that 
reveals through the data that's been collected on a whole bunch of different people having taken the scale that certain items hung together. And so the big five is a really good illustrator of what that means with factor analysis, that you know there were all those questions that you um, responded to on the scale, 44 items. And by um, performing factor analysis, they discovered that some, some of those questions kind of clumped together. Um, and then they looked at the content of those items that clumped together and they said, well, in the case of the first one, they said, well, all of these seem to have something to do with, you know, sociability, warmth, assertiveness, we could probably label these in general, you know, extroversion. And that's the process that a scale that's developed through factor analysis goes through, where you, um, you let the data show you what questions are going together, then you have to, this is the subjective part, you as the des test designer have to look at those items and say, okay, what do they all have in common? You know, what's a simple label I could give to all these questions that are kind of hanging together? And that's what they did here with the big five. So these five traits were not ones that the researchers went in looking for. These are five traits that emerged naturally out of the data. Um, so this set of five traits has been supported through the field of, of research called behavior genetics. Um, this is a, an area of study that looks at um, how much of individual differences, you know, differences between people, and it could be on personality, it could be intelligence, there's lots of different things that behavior genetics looks at, um, but how much of these differences can be attributable to shared genes, and how much of it is attributable to unshared genes. So behavior geneticists oftentimes will look at twins, um, you know, regular siblings, uh, people from different cultures, seeing if they score more differently from each other than people who are, um, who share more of their genes in common, things like that. And that kind of research has supported the presence of these five traits, as well as cross-cultural research um, has supported the presence of these five traits across different cultures. So these seem to be actual, you know, individual differences and not just things that maybe people have been, um, you know, encouraged in their own cultures to, to display. Um, so probably they're innate. Um, the big five, you know, knowing how you score on the big five has been really useful for people who are attempting to make predictions about individual outcomes in the, in the future. Um, and I, when I say individual outcomes, I don't mean outcomes for an individual. Um, I mean, outcomes for individual um, traits. So for example, we know that people who are higher in conscientiousness tend to have longer lasting job experiences. Like people who are high in conscientiousness don't change jobs as often as people who are lower in conscientiousness. Um, we know, for example, that people who are higher in neuroticism are more likely to be divorced than people who are lower in neuroticism. So we, that's what I mean by you know, important life outcomes are predictable if you know certain traits that the person holds. Now, just because we have all this evidence that these five traits seem to be um, sort of innate, that doesn't mean that there are only five traits. These are the ones that, based on the questions that were asked, you know, sort of revealed themselves through the factor analysis technique. So it's possible that if additional questions had been included, that uh, there would be more traits, you know, that revealed themselves. So I really wanted to make sure that that's really clear, that we don't, we don't necessarily think that we've found all the traits per se, but we know that these have got good solid evidence that they're probably innate. Um, all right. I think that's a good place to stop since I'm getting close to 15 minutes and that's, believe it or not, my goal for how long these videos should be. Um, so I'll stop here with Big Five. On the next video, we'll pick up with Isink's version of this, which caused him to conclude that there are three traits. So we'll talk about that in the next segment.